Hey YouTube, today we're going to replace this garage door opener with this one. This one here is a Genie Stealth 750, it's a one and a quarter horsepower motor. This one up here is our model 2055, this is a half horsepower motor. And I recently insulated this garage door and I noticed that the motor here is struggling to lift this garage door. So I thought I'd just go ahead and replace it with a more powerful motor. I know we should be doing some work on the springs, but I'm not gonna mess with the springs. I could still open the garage door manually if I uncouple it from the garage door opener. But I could tell it's a little bit heavier and I could tell this uh, basic motor here is having a hard time. So we're gonna replace it with this one here. So let's get to it. Let's go ahead and open this box up and see what's in it. yellow bag of parts. These here would be the rails and some uh, mounting but I'm gonna reuse the mounting that's up there already. These are some other parts. This here is the sides that go over the um, the bulbs of the lamps. Some parts coated by the color of the packet they're in. Uh, new wall mount control. Uh, idle pulley. Bits and pieces. Uh, this here is the battery backup. This thing comes with a battery backup that we're going to have to hook up. There's a lot more in there. Here's the belt. These are all instructions. Uh, outside control, two small mini controls. And then this is the motor itself. This is a 7550, 7055 model, one and a quarter horsepower. So the very first thing the instructions say to do, go ahead and take all these rails out. Now ideally what we could do is reuse what we have uh, with the current garage door opener, but because that's been in place for a few years, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the all new stuff in place. So this here is the first rail that would go against the wall and the instructions say from this bag you use a pin and this idler wheel, oh, I might have to cut some of this open. There's a cotter pin and an idler wheel. Go ahead and put this cotter pin in and this is just the idler pulley that the belt will run against. Then we need to take this nut and bolt and this is the stop for the carriage. And we're just gonna have to run that up here and tighten it up. Then we take this carriage, slide it in here and just go ahead and pop the rest of these in place.
Next thing we do is uh, we could probably use this box piece as a little bit of a support. So at this point here, we go ahead and just slip this piece over here. It'll fit loose. This is what attaches to the bottom of this thing, or the, the top as the case might be. And this here is the drive part that goes on the motor. And that just goes in like so. At which point now we're ready for the belt. I'm just going to put something down on the other end just to support it. This is the box that came in the package. I'm just going to use that to support it. Just like that. And this is probably the exact same belt that's in place right now, but I'll just go ahead and replace everything new. All right, this thing has two different color ends. The silver end goes this way and the gold end goes through the front. And the teeth, the teeth of course go up against go up against the um, the body of the, the rail like so and we're gonna just pass this through the carriage And this here is the turnbuckle. And we're gonna use this turnbuckle to connect these two pieces. So now what we wanna do is tighten this up until we get about a quarter inch slack on the reverse side. So just holding the two pieces together, we're just gonna tighten it up. And once we get a quarter inch slack on either side, we're going to use the two lock knots on it to tighten them down, to lock them down in place. And what you want to do also is make sure that throughout doing this, the teeth of this belt stays towards the actual rails itself. We're almost a quarter inch on the other side. And I'll show you what I mean here. Maybe you could see this in the camera, but the belt is about a quarter inch in terms of slack off the bottom of this rail, like right where my finger is. And that's about the amount of uh, slack we want. I'll just give it a little bit more. Just to make sure it's, it's good and tight. And then we just make sure the teeth are facing inwards. And once the teeth are facing inwards, we could go ahead and lock it down. This here, I believe is 7 16 So we could use two 7 16 inch, two 7 16 inch, 7 16 inch wrenches and uh, lock this in place. I'm just gonna give it one more turn just for good measure. Here we go. And I'm just gonna lock these down now. And these are just regular old lock knots. So the gold is a reverse thread. 
Here we go. That's locked down. That's not moving. This belt supposed to last a lifetime, so we shouldn't really need to adjust this anymore after this. Now we got to attach the rail to this power head. And there's really only one way this thing could go. And once the pins on this thing line up, it'll just pop right into place. Just like so. And we're gonna use these, these four, they look like half inch, but let's make sure. Nope, they're seven sixteenths. We're gonna use these four seven sixteenths uh, screws, bolts to secure this to the motor head. Now here's one thing we gotta do that the instructions weren't too clear about, but we gotta go ahead and put this battery backup in place as well, right? And here's the, the plug-in for the battery backup. And it has two little screw holes here where you just secure it with screws that come in this little kit. And they just plug in, uh, they just plug in like so. Just like so. There's a little groove for that. It goes in there. And then we're just gonna screw that in place right there. I wanna show you a close up. There's the screws that hold the battery back up in place. There's the plug for the battery back up. And here's where the belt has like about a quarter inch from the bottom, right? Has about a quarter inch from the bottom and about a quarter inch from the, uh, from the rail. At this point, we should be ready to replace this, this uh, original garage door opener. We're gonna keep some things in play that we're gonna just reuse. There's no need to take it out. The little attachment up to the wall, we're just gonna leave that in place and reuse that. I'm gonna keep this bracket here and just remove it from the carriage. And the mounts up there, we're just gonna leave that in place. All right, so we up here at the garage door, open it now. And what I did was I, I took, I turned the, the bulbs off, or I turned the lamps off so it'd be easier to see. And just taking this bulb cover off, here's where all the wires come into, right? These two here that are joined together, and hopefully you could see that. These here are for the sensors the uh, transmit and the receive and this these two here are for the uh, the opener on the wall and they can look kind of kind of loose and hopefully you can see that you just have to depress these little connectors here pull these wires out unplug the power and then all we're gonna do is remove the bolts on either side these two bolts and let this thing down because we're gonna reuse these same mounts that are up here. So just to be on the safe side, I went ahead and removed the bulbs, just in case I should drop this thing. This here is the wire for the, uh, the wall mounted control. These are the two for the safeties. And all we gotta do is remove these two half inch uh, bolts holding this thing together. This is gonna be tricky removing that on each side while holding it in the same spot. So I'm gonna put the camera down and I'll show you when I got it out. I just had to remove the arm that attaches the carrier to the garage door opener and I was able to drop this down once I took the bolts off. There's just a little pin all the way up there. We just need to lay this on the floor. 
remove that pin as well. So this is the old garage door opener, I have that out. This is the new one, with the exception of the battery on the back. They look pretty much the same, except that one is a little bit more than twice as powerful. We're gonna reuse that same spot up there, and we're gonna put it up the same way we took it off. And just line these holes up, stick the spin through, and it might take a little bit of wiggling to get through, and just replace the cotter pin. Line this bad boy up, and just barely run this up before I tighten it up. sure we have this in the carrier like so and that's the closed position right and that one in there unlock them both in with a couple cotter pins I'm just gonna flip that power cord out of the way for now. I wanna run these back through this little loom here. This was originally intended for the antenna, but here's the antenna here and I've always just let them dangle, so I'm just gonna let it dangle. This one here is the one for the, for the sensors. That's why I kept them together. And we're just gonna have those come through like so. And it's really easy to put these in. I'm gonna put them in the same way I had them before. The red going in the black slot. And you're supposed to be able to just push this in like so. And use these little tabs here to lock them in place. So already, so I have these back in place just the same way they were on the original door. Uh, for the most part, I could be done with this now and just use the sensors that are on the door and the uh, existing garage door control because it's the same brand and everything but I'm going to go ahead and replace those and use all new stuff. So I'm not sure if you could see these buttons but these are the up and down travel buttons and these are the buttons that you're going to have to use to program the up and down uh, travel. It wasn't exactly as I'd like it to be so I had to program it a little bit but now you can see that is going up pretty quickly pretty easily and goes all the way open and you should see it go all the way close Uh, I hope you like this video. If you do, give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless you.